Hello everyone and welcome to another video in this special Halloween a week. My name is Abraham Leal and today we're going to be working with a very, very, very cool software, which is a speed tree. Now, for those of you that are unaware of what speed tree is, the name says it, it's just a software to make trees, but not any kind of trees. It can make amazing looking trees really, really, really fast. Now, I'm going to preface this by saying I'm not the best at speed tree. This is actually one of the softwares that I am learning, but we do have a master, our good friend Arash Arif. He is a master environment artist and we have his course available on Skillshare if you want to check it out. Down here in the description, we have the uh, access to Skillshare and all of our other platforms. If you want to learn speed tree, I cannot recommend his course enough. You're going to learn all of the amazing things that he has to show in that uh, course. So yeah, let's jump into the into the main stuff. Just move this to the side. There we go. And uh, this is a speed tree. Now, as I mentioned, speed tree is a really, really cool software for the generation, like procedural generation of trees. Um, every now and then in my classes, my students will be like, I want to do a project and it's going to be a big forest or it's going to be like a jungle. And I'm going to start like sculpting my trees inside of Sears. And I'm like, dude, don't do that. Don't do that to yourself. Don't, um, don't <laughs> go through that pain. Making a tree, making a bush, making flowers, making all of this like plant things is really, really complex. And not only is it complex, when we try to do it manually, like if you grab an image of a flower, of a tree, of a bush, and you try to do it in Blender, Maya, or whatever software, we as humans tend to organize things and things look very stiff, they look very fake, and they don't look good. That's why tools like this one are really, really good for us uh, for like ge the generation of the things. The speed tree is actually quite, quite um, affordable. It has a $20 uh, monthly license for indie students. It actually has a free learning uh, license. So in case you want to learn about speed tree, just go to the site, download the free version. You're not going to be able to export, but you're going to have access to the whole thing. So as you can see here, we can do all types of things. We can do stumps, we can do binds, we can do palms, we can do grass, we can do broad leaves. I'm going to start with a blank just so I can show you how all of these things uh, work. Um, the movement here is a little bit weird. Um, you need to go to edit and then preferences. And on the tree window, you need to change the control scheme. I personally like to use all of this Maya, which is alt in the three clicks on our, on our software to be able to move a little bit better. Now, how does this work? Well, this works by creating literally a tree of nodes that we have over here in this generation panel and then adjusting all of the properties that we get to generate the tree that we want. So what am I going to do? What are we going to do? Well, again, you already probably saw the thumbnail. But uh, the idea that I have, uh, there's this um, sleepy hollow. It's like the the um, uh, headless horseman, right, film. And there was this very, very like jaggedy, crazy looking tree with a lot of roots. I think I'm going to do I'm, I'm going to go for something like this, but I want to kind of like mix it together with something a little bit more whimsical. Um, something that has to do a little bit with my, like, uh, like magic and stuff like that. So you probably guys, you, you guys have probably heard about, uh, Ori and the Blind Forest, right? This is an indie game. I've, it's on my list. I actually have it on Steam, but I haven't had the chance to finish it or, or play it completely. Uh, I, I want to do it because I've heard like marvelous things about this one and the sequel. And as you can see, we have this tree with like magical leaves. So I'm going to, I'm going to be mixing both elements and, and let's see where this goes. So the way this is starts, very simple. Right click, we're at geometry and we're going to add a trunk. There we go. So that's our trunk. And uh, when you have your trunk on this side, you're going to have a lot of different things that we can do. I'm going to go to the generation tab first, which is like the basic one. And here we select what we want to, the trunk to, to be doing. Right now, as you can see, we only have one trunk, but we can modify this, have two trunks, three trunks, or however many trunks we have. And that's, of course, going to change the complexity of our tree. Right here, we have the amount of polygons. This is important if you're doing game development, because of course you don't want to have like a super, super heavy uh, tree. You want to keep this as optimized as possible. But in this case, we're just going to do one uh, one trunk. We can play around with the jumbo. In this case, not doing that much. The sweep is going to rotate the, the way that the, that the thing is moving. Not I don't want to do anything just yet. And um, yeah, that's pretty much it. We can change the rotation. We can change the position. We can change the scale. Uh, in this case, I think I, I think it's fine to be honest. I'm gonna go to the spine. The spine is the the like the main shape itself. The way this works, I, I'm not I, I didn't program this, of course, but the way this works is it pretty much uh, uses uh, curves, right? Splines, and it generates geometry around those splines to be able to create that. That's why it's called spine, I think. And that what we can do here, as you can see, we can change the size of the spine. So let's say 20 meters high, and we can change the start angle. If we want this to be like on a, 
from a different sort of angle. I, I kind of want to shape the or change the the thickness a little bit. Let's go here. We can change the straightness. <laughs> That's fun. And it's all about parameters. This is also going to be a a what's the word a uh, a video that might not last thirty minutes or it might depending on how we get the generation. But there we go. So for instance, there I add a little bit of curl to the whole thing, and that is uh, giving me something something interesting. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to click this guy. I'm going to right click uh, on this guy actually, and I'm going to say hand drawing convert to hand drawn. What this is going to do now is when I click this guy and press W, I'm going to be able to get the splines. Remember that I mentioned that there's a curve going through the tree. We can get the splines and now you can actually move these things and the position it so that it creates the shape that you want. So if we go back to our like sleepy hollow reference, there we go. Uh, we get this very like side of or like, yeah, this tree like going to the side. So let's do that. Of course, remember that this is still a 3D object, so it's important that we that we obey that and we try to to generate the the shape that we want. If you move the handles around, as you can see, we're gonna get something really, really interesting. Let's move this like this. It doesn't have to be the same. That's one of the cool things about trees. Trees are very, very organic, very random. So, so we can play around and create something that looks. Interesting. There we go. I like that. So this is the main trunk of our uh, of our tree. Now, again, the way this works as a, as a software is that once you have something that looks interesting, and the most important here is to make sure that the silhouette on all of the angles look interesting. So you want to make sure that the things are just they're just like rolling and moving in a in a good direction, right? Like if you see this thing from all of the angles, you should see like good curvatures and good stuff. We've mentioned how how important silhouette is for for anything in 3D because that's a uh, I'm not sure if I mentioned this before but I think don't quote me on this there's a like psychological or biological research that has been done in how our uh, brains like processes things and the first thing it processes is contrast so that's the silhouette we just see the shape like the broad shape and then we fill in the details like shadows uh, texture all that kind of stuff so um, like the most primitive eye, it, it could only distinguish between light, light and dark, and that's where silhouettes come into play. So that's like, again, the first like passive information that we get, and that's why uh, it's so important. Right click on the trunk, we're gonna add a geometry, and we're gonna add branches, and we're gonna add big branches. And boom, look at that. We immediately get this super creepy looking tree, and we can go into the branches, and we can actually start like playing around with the properties of these branches. So again, if we go to generation, uh, frequency is how many branches we get. So we can have very few branches or a lot of branches. I do want to have, I would say quite a few. So probably something like this. Uh, count, again, we can diminish the count. Probably something like that. And uh, there's a very cool one. It's uh, right here, boundaries, first and last. Boundaries is based on the length of the previous node, which in this case is the trunk, where do you want to place them? And as you can see, we're placing them between 0.2 and 0.9 of our previous curve. So if we want to push the branches further up, we need to bring the first and push it up. See that? And if we want to bring the branches down, we need to bring the last and bring them down. And that's how you can kind of modify things into, into position. Now, again, here we can definitely go hand drawing and convert to hand drawn. And now each one of this will have its own. I'm not going to do that because it's going to take forever to to tweak each specific branch, but just keep in mind that it is possible to do that. And it looks again, very, very cool. So we're going to go again to this big branches. Um, we can uh, go to the spine and on the length absolute, we can uh, reduce it or here the percent of parent, as you can see, we can bring the percentage back. That's another great way to do it. Cause I don't want the branch to be like super, super uh, intense. The start angle is where we want to point them up, where we want to point them down. And again, we can just like modify this and create something interesting i do want to go for a couple more so i'm going to increase the frequency a little bit there we go that looks nice and here's what i'm going to do i'm going to go to the spine and there's an option in the spine that's called the break so i can actually like break some of this as you can see right there we're going to get like uh, stumps like if someone came in and, and got some uh, lumber out of this thing we'll get this i'm going to go back to generation and actually want to push the first up a little bit there we go Perfect. This one I don't love. 
So I'm gonna like modify it a little bit so that it's pushing up a little bit more. Uh, Cause I, I don't want this thing to be pointing down. It looks a little bit weird. We can even uh, we can even try going again to, to the spine and changing the orientation. Just like tweaking things and see if we can make them like point forward a little bit more. I want to avoid as um, much overlaps as possible. Like there's a little bit of overlap there. It's not the end of the world if you get an overlap, right? Uh, uh, but just just be mindful that it might look a little bit weird. But there we go. This this looks good. I think it's a it's a nice uh, a nice uh, shape so far. Let's add the next step, which is going to be our uh, small um, our small branches. So we're going to go branches, and we're going to add uh, little branches. And as you can see, we get little branches. These little branches are really, really important because they're going to be holding something called the tweaks. So if you've ever gone, uh, I have a small tree here on my, on my patio. patio. Um, if you go there, you know, it's the trunk, big branches, small branches, and then super small branches, and then the tweaks, which is where the leaves are actually coming from. So these guys right here are the ones that are going to be holding our tweaks. If we want to have a lot of leaves later on, that means that we are going to need to have a couple more uh, of these guys as what we expect. So... I'm just going to not make them as long. I'm going to reduce the percent of parent on the spine. Uh, but I do want a couple more. So I'm going to go to frequency. And just add a couple of more tweaks right there. Nice. Nice, nice, nice. Oh, there's one more thing I want to do. I'm going to go back to the big ones right here. And um, there's a lot of options here. We can turn on ambient occlusion to get a, a nicer shadow effect. In this case, we, we really don't need it. Uh, but there's the collision and forces. We can actually turn on the wind. So if we go here to wind... And we say, uh, like, a, just do a fast wind. There we go. As you can see here, when I enable the wind, the uh, tree is actually, like, moving. And this is something that you can eventually bring into an engine, so that the trees are moving on the forest. I believe they did this quite a bit for The Witcher 3. Back in the day, I remember when I played The Witcher 3 and I saw the forest, I was, like, literally blown away by the, by the amount of detail that we have. We can, of course, lower the strength or increase the strength. There we go. So we don't have as much, as much wind. We don't want this thing to be like moving our tree that much. And at any point, you can just um, at the end, at the, disenable it. So right here, no, no more wind. There we go. So uh, as the wind is a force, there's other forces that we can use, as you can see right here. But for the force to work, you need to select the object first. So in this case, we select the big branches, and then we add a force, such as for instance a direction. And as you can see, this arrow is gonna make all of the branches, the big bra branches only, in this case it's only the big branches, go down, right? So I can move the force, and for instance, if I want to create this sort of like sweeping uh, tree that's kind of like being pushed to the side or, or, or moved to one side, I can I can definitely do that. And I, I think I kind of want to do that, like down with an angle like this. Uh, now, if you want, as you can see, we have this like yellow thingy, that's the that's the force thing, if you, if you click on this guy, or on this guy on the direction force, you're gonna see that it is affecting the big elements. If we also want to affect the small ones, we need to go to the little ones. And if we go to, where is it, forces, we allow the forces and down here, we're gonna have the uh, forces that we can, there we go, direction. So I'm gonna turn on direction so that it also affects those guys right there. And we can move the, the direction to how much we want it to affect it. Uh, and the cool thing is we can actually turn this one off select the little branches, go to the forces, and add another force. Let's say we add like a, like a curl force for whatever reason. And look at that. We now have a curl force that's creating this very crazy looking uh, uh, twigs, and uh, and it's only affecting the uh, little branches. This is why the, the software is so powerful, because we're able to to modify and generate things um, and, uh, and just come up with very, very cool looking things that would take forever. Imagine trying to do this inside of Maya or inside of Blender or inside of ZBrush. It would take you forever to create something like, like this. Let's go to the next part. Right click. We're going to add the geometry and now we're going to add branches and we're going to add twigs. Twigs. The twigs are the last little branches. This is where we're going to have our uh, leaves, like our, our bundles of leaves. And this is where we can, again, let's increase the amount a little bit. So I'm going to go uh, a couple more frequency and uh, a little bit more count. For the for the tweaks, my God, the um, what's the word the the spam colors have been relentless this past couple of weeks. Let's remove some of the tweaks. There we go, something like that. And as you can see now, our tree has this very cool looking uh, tweak effect. Now, uh, you can see that right now, the uh, big branches that we uh, cut or broke, 
they they are they have the holes uh, open right you can actually like uh, get rid of those if we go to add geometry and we have a cap as you can see uh, we're gonna add the cap and now it's gonna look like it's uh, broken and uh it's uh, no longer like a flat surface so as you can see that that gives us a really really nice effect here for our for our tree i'm gonna grab this guy you can actually move the arrow with like a uh, uh, very similar to how maya works just be careful because some of the forces are like position based so if you move them to a different side you might get a, a different result so there we go that's uh that's the tree and then now we go back to the tweaks and here's where we're gonna be adding the leaves so i'm gonna right click the tweaks and we're gonna go to add geometry and we're gonna add leaves and uh, there's a couple of different options i like alternating to be honest as you can see we get something interesting there the problem is uh the leaves look horrible <laughs> they look horrible because they're just planes right and yes we can go here uh to the to the generation of the of the elements and we can increase like the spread we can do in the skin we can uh, change the size of the of the leaves again based on percent of parent um here Let's go to generation again. Uh, let's do alternating and let's see if we can change things a little bit. Well, there we go. But the problem is, uh, as you can imagine, it looks very bad, right? So we need to add the material. Easiest way to add the material, we go up here. We click this little button on the material section. We add a new one. Let's call this, um, I'm going to call it SP uh, or SH as in Sleepy Hollow. And let's call this Leaf. A, because we're going to have two types of leaf, and we're going to say OK. Now, uh, by default, if we go here to the um, to the presets, we go to broad leaf and we go to leaves, we're going to have this leaves. This is like the basic uh, oak uh, leaf, which I think is fine. I'm just going to double click this guy right here, and it's automatically going to detect that we have a lot of other uh, like leaves. So we just click it, and that's it. Um, and uh, what we need to do now is we just need to assign this material, the SH leaf A, to the leaves right here. So we select them, we go to material, and here on uh, material, we just select the SH leaf, and ta -da! we got our very nice leaves coming from the from the tweaks of the um, of the element. Uh, I think uh, what else can we let's uh, turn on two sided so we can see them from both sides. And uh, here again, we would need to go to the leaves and just change certain things, right? I think they're a little bit too big, uh, so I'm gonna make the leaves a little bit smaller. There we go. And here's something really really interesting. Um. One thing that we can do is we can actually control a lot of the properties from the trees and, and from the elements with curves. So if I click this guy right here, the size, you're going to see that right now the size is constant on the tweaks. So it means that every single leaf that's on a tweak is going to be the same size, 0.4. If we want to change this, we can tell you, we can tell uh, Speedry, hey, as you go, uh, let's say, farther out on the, on the tree, I would like the, the leaves to be smaller because they're the, like the newer leaves, right? So we can just bring this down. And then play around with like a curve here right click and just say uh ba -ba -ba, instead of point here and we can play around and say as you get uh, closer to the to the end of the element the leaves are gonna be smaller so some of them are gonna be like a good size and others are gonna be a little bit smaller let's increase the percent of parents right there and you can see how some of them are really big and some of them are really small i definitely want to increase them more or i want them more so i'm gonna go to generation i'm gonna change philo taxi i'm gonna go to proportional and as you can see, proportional allows me to have like more. Um, and here's where we can increase the, the amount of leaves that we have. We can jumble them up so they're like ruffled, right? Uh, again, I need to go to skin and change the, the size a little bit because it's a little bit too too much for, for the uh, elements. Let's go with sweep as well. Just want to add variation. Maybe the number is a little bit too, too high. Now, remember, all of this is connected, right? Uh, every single thing is connected to each other. So if we want more leaves, we need more tweaks. So we can go to the um, to the big element right here. We can say add geometry, add uh, branches. We're going to add another little branches. Okay. And then on those little branches, we're going to add another um, branches and we're going to add more tweaks. And then on those tweaks, we're going to add, I believe we can copy and paste the node and then just connect it there. There we go. So now we have the exact same thing. We might we might just need to go to this one and change the, the size a little bit so that it matches the, the other side. And that way we get a, a very interesting looking effect. I do, I would like to change this one. So I'm gonna 
like rotating things a little bit. And here's where I might even go to um, to the thing that we've mentioned before, the hand drawn thing. So I'm gonna go right click hand drawing, convert hand drawing, W. And I wanna like move this one up a little bit because it was it was doing something a little bit weird. I would say I, I wasn't loving the the effect. There we go. Now uh, we can do the exact same thing with the trunk of the tree. So I'm gonna go here to the materials. I'm gonna add a new material. This is gonna be called trunk. Hit OK. And uh, if we go all the way back to the trunk, to the original one, and we go to materials, we can assign uh, the material, the trunk material. And over here, we can go to our options, to the bark options, and we have this oak bark, get everything in. And as you can see, we get a very, very nice texture for our element. There's other ways to texture it. And here's where I'm going to, again, refer you to um, our friend Arash. Uh, he, he has way, way more information about Speedtree. Again, check out the link down here below uh, for his course uh, on all of our platforms because uh, he, he really knows his stuff when it comes to environment. I'm just a, I'm just a newbie learning the basics here. Um, as you can see, the caps don't really have them, so I definitely need to add another material here. I'm going to duplicate or not add a new one. And this is going to be called uh, cap. And then on the cap, I do believe we have caps, uh, clusters. Nope. Not there we go. Let's add a knot. Hit OK. And we can use that one as our material. There we go. So now it looks like the like the inner rings of the of the tree. Now, one very cool thing, uh, this is something that I discovered uh, recently, um, is that you can actually change the colors. So if you click this texture, you can change things. So I was thinking, hey, let's make this like a dead tree with a little bit of magic. So I can bring, for instance, the saturation down. And it's gonna be like a, like a darker green. I'm gonna bring the brightness down as well. So it's like a darker, like a dark green leaf. I'm gonna... Decrease the contrast a little bit, and there we go. We have like a like some sad uh, sad uh, leaves right going around. Now, uh, unfortunately, the render here inside of uh, Speed Tree is not as good. Um, I think the Speed Tree uh, for Cinema has like a render option that you can uh, use, but in this case, uh, I'm using the game's uh, version. So let's turn on the the wind because that, that's also gonna be quite nice to see the the element going here. Oh, it has a lot of like variation. <laughs> There we go. As you can see, that's like the, the uh, ruffling of the of the element. If we go to the wind, there's probably some sort of uh, like, uh, there we go, the ripple. So the ripple distance, let's lower this. I don't want, I don't want to have as much movement. There we go. So now let's add a second set of leaves and uh, I'm going to go to the twigs here. I'm going to add a new geometry and there's going to be leaves. And again, let's do uh, opposite. So that's a new set of leaves and I'm going to go back to our meshes. I'm going to grab the basic uh, SH leaf and we're going to duplicate it. Let's call this SH leaf uh, B. I'm going to hit OK. And now that I have that, um, if we go again to this card right here and we go to the materials, we can change the material to SH leaf uh, B. Right now it's copying the exact same amount, but since it's a duplicate, I think I should be able to change. There we go. Just the brightness on this, guys. Uh, I'm going to increase the brightness, I'm going to increase the saturation, and uh, I'm going to change the color so that it's more like a like a blue magical hue. There we go, look at that. And uh, yeah, we'll just go here, let's uh, decrease the, the size of the leaves a little bit. Eventually, I would definitely plug these leaves into an emissive material. I don't think we have an emissive right here. Uh, no, we have custom materials, but I don't think there's like an emissive one. Uh, so I would like definitely change that later. I think I'm gonna make this lips like really small, again to to create a little bit of contrast, kind of to make them look a little bit like uh, what's the word, like uh, uh, flowers or something like that. Let's increase. Oh, I don't like feel taxi. Let's try flood. That looks good. There we go. A couple more bundles there. Let's increase the relative. Sync uh, moves them out of the of the like the position, the, the original position. So you can see if I increase the sync, 
it like moves them out of the like their root or the yeah their their, their respective roots. I'm gonna go to to the size again, and I'm gonna play around with the curves because I want them there to be a little bit of variation on the on the curves. You can also change here. You can use like a like a S curve, for instance. Let's do it the opposite. So we're gonna start big, and then we're gonna go with very small ones at the very end. And there we go. Uh, that's that's pretty much it. We are actually a little bit shorter than I thought it was gonna be. Uh, but hopefully, guys, with this, you have a very good idea of how to create a, your very first tree here inside of uh, Speed Tree. Oh, there's a couple more things that I want to add, actually. Uh, first of all, I'm going to go to the displacement here, and let's uh, increase the displacement of the tree. As you can see, that's going to give us a, a little bit more of a, of a gnarly look on the on the tree. It's going to change the, the the way. We can actually... I'm thinking... Can we do two, two trunks? And that's fine. So displacement, that's the that's the one. And let's add roots. So right click, add geometry, uh, pa -pa 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 decorations, and it's the roots. Look at that, beautiful. Um, on the roots, uh, as you can see, the roots automatically add uh, like a root tweaks. Uh, and if you had like a mountain or like a rock or something, you would be able to, to create this. You can actually import, there's a way, uh, I'm not gonna do it right here because it's a little bit more advanced, I would say. Uh, but there's a way to import your own geometry and then make the roots go around that specific geometry. It's very cool. Um, let's change the roots here. A couple more roots, I would say. I do want a little bit of displacement on the roots. Again, to make them a little bit gnarly. Forces, I am going to use... Can we use a curl force? Yeah. We can actually use both forces, so the down and the curve. And then we can play around with how how much we want each of them to, to be affected. Look at that. Not freaking bad, right? There we go. Um, I don't love that connection right there. I think it could be the displacement. Let's, let's get rid of the displacement. What else could it be? Sweep is how much uh, coverage we have on the tree. Which 360 is usually the way to go. Spiral. Nah, I really don't need spiral. Ooh, this is pretty cool. We can add more roots. Some of them coming from really high there on the tree. Not bad, right? So, yeah, there you go, guys. Uh, this is the way to do it. Again, it will take me a little bit longer to bring this into Unreal or another engine. Uh, but if you want to uh, see how this would be transformed into a more, like, a uh, finalized render scene, let me know in the comments, and I'll be happy to add that. Probably not during this Halloween week, because tomorrow and on the Sunday, we're going to be working on the whatever you guys pick from the past couple of days. Uh, so far, I think I've seen uh, La Llorona being the, the favorite one, so we're probably going to be texturing the dress. Uh, but let me know in the comments which one of the four previews projects you want. It could be the pumpkin, it could be the dress, it could be the um, the coffin, or the gravestones that we did yesterday. And whichever one you pick, we're going to do one day for Substance Painter and one day for Marmoset to finish up our uh, Halloween special week. Uh, that's it for this one, guys. Don't forget to share, subscribe. It really helps us a lot. We've uh, recently reached 30,000 subscribers thanks to your help. Um, everything that can uh, help the channel grow is going to be a benefit, I think, for everyone. Not only you guys, but um, we as instructors, we, of course, get motivated and we can keep producing amazing-looking stuff. So thank you very much, guys. I'll see you back on the next one. Bye-bye.